Most of the movies we've done for you so far have involved conifers or evergreens and uh, now that it's autumn here in the UK and uh, broadleaf trees are beginning to drop their leaves I thought we'd take a look at one or two of those. Working on broadleaf trees is uh, somewhat different from working on evergreens in as much as a lot of the structure of the tree is built by uh, careful pruning and so on and so forth. The tree that I've bought for you today is a hornbeam this is collected uh, in Italy and as you can see it's a very small leaf variety and it's got a lot of very fine uh, dense twigging which ultimately is going to make fantastic bonsai. Looking at this tree you can see there are more than one or two problems that we've got to address and it's very difficult to actually figure out what we're going to be able to do with this. This is a tree I've had uh, in the garden for four maybe five years and in that time in this pot it's very well established. Uh, what I want to begin to do today is to walk you through the design process of this tree. Looking at this tree we've got three primary branches here, here and here. Because this tree has been hit by a rock and then it's grown out fairly flat in every direction that kind of gives us a little bit of a challenge but uh, I think that this branch here gives us good taper, it's got lots of nice side branches and I think that's the one that we're going to use to build the apex of this tree so I'm now going to remove this one. The reason for removing this branch is primarily because it was coming directly at us and that's something that never looks particularly good in bonsai. So you can see having removed that now we've opened up the trunk. This one now looks very thick and very straight uh, and it's very ugly at the base where it's been cut so that's another one that we're going to remove. And all of a sudden now this is gone you can see your eyes beginning to move through this part. There's some lovely twists and turns in this old growth here and also we've got this little guy here which again has got a nice little turn in it. You can now see that we've got some reverse taper here where this tree has been broken in the past in the mountains, probably been hit by a rock. You can see we've got this beautiful old callus tissue, but then we have got this thick ugly lump here. We've also got some very poor roots where this has been pulled out of the ground when it was here. So basically carving is going to allow us to reduce this part of the tree. Uh, removing this and also carving part of this lump is going to begin to improve the uh, taper. And then working these roots down to something fairly small and insignificant is going to improve the movement much more. Then I'm going to show you an interesting technique on how to bend this branch to bring it more upright to give the tree a little bit more height therefore better movement because a parallel line in a branch like this never looks good when it's parallel to the surface of the pot. So having moved this up we're then going to be able to use wire in the conventional way to rearrange all these lovely small twiggy branches to be able to build a nice triangle uh, which will give us the basis uh, of a very attractive bonsai. Now having got rid of this branch you can see this one here is very uninteresting it's only got a tiny little piece on the end of that and that's not going to be able to be bent into the design of the tree particularly attractively so that also can be removed. I know a lot of people would worry about trying to bend a branch this big and it's something that uh, certainly most people would try and live with but for me it's a little bit too uh, horizontal, it's a bit too, too flat and so what I need to do is raise that and the way I'm going to do that is with this, this is a turnbuckle and you can see the end which is normally a loop has been cut off just to create a little fork. We've got this conveniently placed dead spur and then what I'm going to do is put a block of wood across the pot and also across the soil that goes underneath the little dead spur and then we just pop that up onto the wood and then by unscrewing that you can see that this branch is moving up nicely. Now there's obviously a limit to what we can do in terms of bending this branch in one go because it would very quickly uh, crack but because this is a very healthy tree this is full of sap it's relatively young wood and you can see it's moving very very easily and basically this uh, turnbuckle will stay here for probably a year possibly even two years and in that time this this branch will create lots of new wood uh, around the, or just underneath the bark and in doing so this position will be fixed 
And of course with a turnbuckle it's possible that we can give it a little bit of a turn once in a while and then we can increase the movement on that. So it would be possible to bring this trunk up to here if we wanted to, although I don't think uh, in this instance we're going to need to, uh, to do that. When bending a thick trunk like this, watch very carefully because minute little cracks in the bark may begin to appear. If they do, just back it off half a turn and then leave it. Three, four months down the road we can give it another turn and move it a little bit more. So you can see from this gap here, I've already moved this branch probably nearly two inches. And this is a very simple, stress-free way of uh, bending a branch like this. And as you can see, it's already improved the flow and the movement through the tree.